What's up? I'm Hutch, and you need to understand complications of spinal cord injuries so that you can help your patients prepare for and avoid these complications. And also pass the NPTE. Now these are complications that will affect all levels of spinal cord injuries. The first is spasticity. This is the big one, so let's talk a little bit about what it is. Remember that the spinal cord is made of upper motor neurons that are part of the central nervous system. Their job is actually to calm down or dampen the effects of the peripheral nerves. So what happens when they're injured? The peripheral nerves overreact and they end up sending too strong of a signal out to the motor units. This causes hypertonia or an increase in tone, also known as resistance to passive motion. Basically, an abnormally high number of motor units are working when they're supposed to be relaxed. Spasticity is a type of hypertonia that gets worse the faster the motion is. So it gets worse with speed or velocity. So in this case, slowing the movement down, slowing the stretch down, can help the stretch become more effective. Stretching these muscles can be really important to avoid contractures, which can severely limit the patient's function and ability. Note that in some cases, spasticity can actually be helpful to improve the patient's function. So you have to be really aware of what muscles to stretch and what muscles to leave. Spasticity is also measured on the modified Ashworth scale. Any patient with a motor impairment is at a much higher risk for DVTs, and pulmonary embolisms, just because these motor units typically help to pump the blood back into the body and can decrease risk of clotting. So for these patients, even passive range of motion can help get the blood flowing and avoid this complication. Similarly, patients with their motor ability affected aren't going to be as weight bearing as they normally would, meaning that their bones are going to deteriorate from lack of use. Equipment like standing frames, light gates, things like that, can help these patients maintain bone density and avoid osteoporosis. Patients that are immobile without sensory protection, uh, with slow blood flow, and with urinary incontinence are at a significantly greater risk for skin breakdown, meaning pressure or stasis ulcers. Moving these patients regularly, as well as having customized wheelchairs with good padding, can help decrease their risk of wounds. Metabolic and activity level changes can cause what's called heterotopic ossification, meaning that the way that the cells reproduce can mutate a little bit, causing bone growth within a muscle. This may limit range of motion, increase spasticity, and even trigger autonomic dysreflexia. Stretching and passive range of motion can typically avoid this. Now it's time for NPTE Jeopardy! Pause the video now if you want time to read and think about the question. Otherwise, you've got five, four, three, Two, one. Spasticity can actually be helpful on occasion with transfers or functional tasks. You have to be careful as a therapist to ensure that the patient has the right amount of spasticity so they are the most independent. Hopefully this covers all of our bases. If not, you can always check out the description box below for a link to my notes in Etsy, or you can comment with questions or suggestions for videos I should do in the future. Otherwise, good luck studying. Go change the world.